Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative with another Divi tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to add an icon in between columns. So you might want to do this like if you want to make process steps or like one, two, three, or like put an arrow between between the columns. So like the first module and then it has an arrow and then points to the second and then second points to the third, something like that, a process step or you know, something like that, as easy as one, two, three, type, you know, that type of thing. And I'll show you that as we get started here. So I'm going to show you how to add that icon there, kind of hanging out between the column there in the center. Let's get started. So here we go. We're going to add these icons between columns. And by the way, this is going to be responsive. It's going to work when you go to tablet mobile. We're going to put the arrow pointing down, you know, in the screenshot there. Obviously, they're pointing across, but and you could replace the icon if you wanted, but... Um, anyway, on responsive sizes, you, it's going to be pointing down. So let's get into this here. So we have a little bit of setup, not a whole lot. Basically, you can kind of just add whatever amount of columns you want. You know, three is kind of what I would expect. And we're going to adjust a couple settings in the row. And you could add any modules you want to the columns, right? So, you know, like maybe you want to add an image, text, button, I don't know, whatever you normally add to a column such as this. And you could say, well, well, Nelson, why don't you just use um, blurbs and do it that way? And and I could kind of, um, but there's something a little different. I'll show you. Like by adding, by doing this, putting the icon in between the columns, it actually helps because then we could add more items here if we wanted to. But yeah, just in general, I think it's going to work better because we can control um, column stacking and all of that. So what I'm going to do is well look at my guide if you're on youtube i have a written guide here on our website as always so the first thing i'm really just suggesting is to add your modules add your columns i already have that in my example website you probably do too so i'm actually gonna adjust the gutter um, the gutter is the space that is between columns so you can see right here i have three columns right column one, two, and three here. And I kind of just wrote these as examples, step one, two, and three. Now, a couple of things I also have, I'll show you here. Um, in the column settings, in the design tab, I have some spacing right there. And I think I rounded the corner a little bit. So nothing major, just literally just some spacing around the content here, okay? So what we're gonna do is actually um, go into each column setting. This is where we're gonna be working inside the row in each of these little the settings inside there all right so that's where we're going to be putting the css now the spacing for in between the columns though is actually in the row settings here and that's like i was saying it's called the gutter so if i go to sizing design tab and then sizing right here you can say use custom gutter width because by default we're not using custom it's it's default and it's three basically these are like predefined percentages right so one would be like nothing at all. And then two, I forget the numbers, if it's like two and a half percent, and then three is like five and a half percent, and four is like 8%, something like that. But anyway, that's the amount of space. So I'm actually, three would be default. I'm actually gonna put it on four because it gives it a little extra space. And you'll see when we put that arrow in there, we're gonna need a little space. So I'm doing that. The other thing, and this is optional, is equalize column heights. Um, if I had like a different amount of content in here, if I had like this, this blurb here was longer text or something, this is going to equalize this white background color. In fact, I may have forgot to say that I actually have the background color set to white in each column, but anyway, it would adjust them. They'd, they'd all be the same height, whether or not the content was right. So that's equalized column height. So I'm going to recommend that you turn that on and put that to four. Okay, so that's it for that. Now there's one thing that is kind of CSS, but we're also kind of in setup mode too. And that is for responsive. So when we stack the columns, there's not enough space between them, like at the bottom. So I can just show you here. Like if I turn this to phone mode, right? You can see that there's really not much space between the bottom of step one and the top of step two. So what we are recommending, go into the first one. I'm in the, well, column one, step one, whatever. So right here in main element, 
I'm in the advanced tab, custom CSS, main element. Click the little phone icon that opens these responsive tabs here. And I'm going to go to the tablet one actually, because tablet will affect phone and tablet. It kind of goes down, right? So from if I do it just in here and I, I already had it in, but um, basically put margin bottom 75 pixels right there in the first two columns, right? So in the main element, tablet, margin bottom, 75 pixels, all right? And do that to the first one, and then do it to the second one as well. Because we want it, we're just worried about the space between the two. And I guess I already had it in here. Okay, so I didn't have it here. So I'm going to type that in. Just say margin bottom like that, and then a colon, and then 75px semicolon, okay? All right, that is very good. Let's save that. Let's go back here and see what the next step is. Oh yeah, so overflow is like when we're putting something in between the columns, we want, it's actually part of the column. So like the arrow right here about, it's gonna be about right there and then about right here. It's actually part of the one before it. So this arrow will be part of step one. This arrow will be part of step two. So it's outside of the boundary of the column, okay? I hope that makes sense. So we need overflow, like it's overflowing the boundary of the column. And by default, that's going to probably be hitting. I, I actually had a couple of different results with that, but I, I found out it's best just to tell you to put it on visible. We go to the advanced tab of these first two columns. You gotta do it twice. Advanced tab, visibility, and then it says horizontal overflow. Make sure this is set to visible, okay? But it's gonna be default. Make sure that, that they're both set to visible. Horizontal overflow, vertical overflow on the first and second steps here, okay? Visible, because we want it to be shown. We want to see the icon that's overflowing the column, if that makes sense. All right, and here we go. Now we can add the CSS. So we're gonna do all of this inside the Divi Builder. We're not doing it, you know, in theme options and child theme like we normally do. So anyway, the first one here is adding the icon for desktop. Now there's going to be a different icon and it's going to be at a different spot for desktop and tablet and phone. That's because it's going to be pointing a different direction and all that. So we're actually using the built in. I don't need to copy that anymore. I added this new feature and I forgot about it. You can click to copy. I'll just click that to copy. So anyway, Content is like slash two four. That's the name of the icon um, Divi's built in font, you know, icon font family. It's called ET modules. So the font family is there. The font size I have just at 50. You can change that. I have it on bold. You could change that. I have the color. You can change that. Position absolute top 50% because we want it to be halfway down. And then the right is just an arbitrary number that I thought looked good. Okay. So when I go in here, I'm going into the step one column to the settings, advanced tab, custom CSS, go to the after. So we're in the after. We're not in the, we're not in like, we put that margin bottom right here in tablet, but now we're just on desktop. So let's open that and make sure we're on the desktop tab in the after. I'm going to paste that right there and you can see it already. There is my icon. It's showing up. And it's looking great. And the 50%, by the way, is the height. Like, see, like 50% is halfway down. That, hope that makes sense. And then this number, you're going to have to check it like in the visual builder. I think probably, oh, right there, like 70. I'm going to update that. Around 70 works good with a gutter of four. And again, if that gutter was smaller, then you know maybe the other number would be better, but you can adjust that. That's the kind of thing you can adjust. Um, I mean, you could change this icon for all I care. You know, I don't know. You know what other um, icons are out there like that? You could use that one. Whatever. Um, and again, we're on the desktop tab, and we're going to do this exact same one in the other column. Okay, so go to the second column, same thing, advanced tab, CSS, open up the toggles, we're on the desktop one, and we paste it in there, and there you go. And now, all we have to do is add it for tablet and phone. So let's go back, that's the second snippet here. 
So this one's going to be slightly different. In fact, while we're in this one, I'll just I'll just do it in here. I'm going to go to tablet. So uh, unfortunately, the preview is off. Yeah, the preview is off. So paste it there. This one has a number 22, and that's the arrow facing down. And then this is calculating the, the left 50% minus half of the font size. <laughs> font size is 50. So 50% 50 to the middle minus 25 PX is putting it halfway left and right. And then the bottom is just, again, another kind of arbitrary number. It's not going to look right in the builder here, unfortunately. But it's going to look fine when we exit. I'll, I'll show you that. So here we go. We're going to the other column. Same same kind of thing here. Make sure we're on the tablet here. Um, I guess I had some code in here before, but for you, we're just pasting that fresh. So there we go. That should be all we need. I'm going to exit the visual builder here. Make sure I save everything. You know, it looks great on desktop in the visual builder, but to see it clearly for tablet and phone, we need to exit. All right, yeah, that looks really good. Um, so here we go, going to my browser tools, and we'll take a look here, see if we did it right. Hey, it looks pretty good there on tablets. So it's um, this extra spacing was added. Remember we did that. And I can just adjust this here so you can see. Yeah, see, there you go. And you don't have to do this one. Like you could just do it on, on desktop. You would only have it in that desktop tab, remember? You wouldn't have to do this last step that I did if you didn't want to. Like, I get that it's a little bit weirder, like, going down, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's up to you. But, um, yeah, you don't have to do that. And you could have, you could skip the step of adding the space and adding the icon to the tablet if you want to. And, again, you could adjust the, the colors here, the spacing. You know, it's going to be different based on what you're doing, what you have. Um, whatever your situation is, that is fine. I like to give you the base and I like you to take it from there and learn a little something as you're doing it. So I hope that you found this useful. Um, hopefully you enjoy this and create some kind of like nice one, two, three thing like this, or it doesn't have to be like that. You could add a, a, a decorative icon. It doesn't have to be an arrow. It can be whatever you want. You could use font awesome if you wanted to change the font family. Um, I guess you could even take it as far as adding an image. Um, you have to use that uh, CSS content property and then add the the image URL. So yeah, you could you could do all that. This is giving you the base for that, and I hope that's helpful. All right, there you go. That's how you add that icon there between the columns. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and found that useful. And if you like that type of tutorial, be sure to be subscribed. We do you know hundreds of Divi tutorials on our blog and here on YouTube. So if you're new or anything like that. Um, this is what you're getting, all kinds of stuff related to Divi and free content that you can use and put to good use. All right, well, we'll see you all in the next video.